All right. I think we are set up. Uh, let's go ahead and get started if everyone's ready. All right. Um, double checking that my audio is working. People can hear me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, awesome. can, can you Great. throw the uh, Can you throw the link just in the chat? Yeah, I was the... just pulling up the chat so I can do that. Awesome. Good idea. All right, link is in the chat. If everyone can go ahead and jump into the doc to lock attendance, that would be great if it will let me. There we go. Okay. All right, and I recognize some people we don't usually have on the call, but as always, if anyone is on the call that would like to speak up and introduce themselves or um, just say hello and let us know what brought them to the Kubert meeting, we would love to hear from you and welcome you. Hi, this is Anneli from, from AMD. Um, so uh, I, I usually don't join the meeting because um, Larry kind of represents us in a little a lot of these meetings, but I have a little bit of cycle time today and uh, wanted to join and, you know, uh, see what's going on. So awesome. thank you for joining. Good to have Thanks. you. All right. So it looks like Andrew, we have some event announcement stuff coming up. Fostem? Yep. Uh, so the Fostem submissions will close very, very, very soon in three days on December 10th. So if you are interested in submitting for that, um, uh, please, please go ahead and do that. The link that I've got there that goes to a community wiki events page um, has a link to both the submission page and also the um, the email that was sent out to Kubert Dev by the um, Dev Room coordinators, and it's got um, a tremendous amount of information in it. Um, so check that out. Uh, I'm normally I offer you know my services to help review. I'm going to be away the next two days, um, so if you could please um, ping Cat. Um, Cat, thank you very much, um, no, and she will be. Um, if I can put words in your mouth, uh, she will be thrilled to review your submissions. Absolutely thrilled, as always, of course. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Andrew. Um, let's see. So jumping into open floor, the status of Kubert CI on ARM64. Sweetness. <coughs> see this topic getting some airtime. Um, who wants to go ahead and tell us about that? Don't see who added it to the agenda. Or if it's a, just a general announcement, I will read from the notes. But I'm sure I won't do it the justice that you will. All right. Um, so it looks like Daniel Hiller and Brian Carey gave us some testing most important the issue list It looks promising. Uh, let's see. 
is there anything that can be done to help support this work and uh, any gaps that need extra coverage or someone assigned? Oh, ready then. Device verification. I didn't realize we had IOMMU on ARM. That's cool. Be sure and check that out if the ARM stuff is interesting to you all. And let's see, looks like we have a half written note about Windows image stuff. <laughs> Can I ask something before? Uh, what kind of ARM CPU was tested? Anyone on the call now? Hey, Andre, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can. I can check with Howard on that. I just, I, I'll just double check with Howard on that, just to give you an answer, and I'll add it to the notes here, maybe. Yeah, uh, I forget the the regarding the Windows image. Uh, there are several templates for Fedora, Ubuntu, and everything uh, that can very easily from the I think it's Quai.io uh, repository, correct? Uh, but there is no Windows there uh, as a template. And we are doing some very good effort on that, do that. Uh, is there someone responsible to do Windows image for Kubert? Um. I'm guessing that unless Microsoft were to publish, publish something that like that in ACR or somewhere, there's probably license problems with redistributing Windows images. <clears throat> That'd be my guess. guess as well, because it's a fully uh, operational installation. Yeah, let me tell you how uh, a website is doing. We are using this website I just put on the web, the chat. Uh, that has an REST API, let me grab it also. That is grabbing the files from Microsoft and can build an ISO image or actually uh, a Windows image with that files. They dump from Microsoft directly. It's just a, a way to access the Microsoft uh, uh, files to build Windows 10 and Windows 11, what we are doing right now. And they are working on to also have the same thing for uh, 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 Windows Server also, for you know. Is there anyone working to, to do that, something like that? Because we are doing, probably we can uh, have something uh, for uh, the community there. Completely automated way to have the latest and greatest version of Windows 10 and Windows 11. I think um, as far as Cooper goes, the reference tech talk pipelines, which can yeah. demonstrate how to automate the setup 
of a Windows OS from the ISO is probably going to be the best bet from the Cooper side. If you find a, a good and safe legal way to... Um, the API generates at the that. ISO file for you to understand. That, that's really cool. I just don't know that any <clears throat> anyone in the, the Cooper side... You can, over the API, <laughs> generate with the latest and greatest uh just put the the the, the on the repository of of, of linux uh, of i think it's quiio something like that from my understanding the issue with hosting that on quay though is it's a fully uh prepped running installation and so that that brings up some questions regarding the licensing because in most cases, Window or Microsoft expects a license for Windows. And so if you host that on Quay, it's a fully operational and fully post-installed thing. Um, what it's already not a script, a recipe. Right. I got it, Larry. <laughs> well, and I know that if I go and try to grab a, a Microsoft Windows ISO, they expect me usually to log in or this or that. Like they have metrics and things that I would be skirting if I redistributed their images outside of their prescribed download. Uh, the website just use uh, a way to update the how Microsoft updates the, the Windows and behind the scenes with that he can create from scratch uh, and the ISO file of Windows for you know, okay. Cool. Um, neat work. Um, as far as anything official, though, uh, jump to the Kubert Tecton Tasks repo, and and that's where you'll find things that that are Kubert official on setting up Windows. Oh, I'm on the mute. I'm just trying to speak with you. <laughs> oh, okay, go ahead. Hey, I just wanted to say that, uh, yeah, I saw this service that Microsoft provides these files free to download, but if we can easily access them without any authorization, that does not mean that we can freely use them for anything else. I guess this API service for Microsoft update uh, still have some um, agreements which we should satisfy i'm not sure about licensing but i think that's the main problem why it can be placed um, why we can't prepare the image and place it like windows image for kubeird uh, otherwise i think that windows should have some kind of cloud images in the same way like ubuntu does that uh, I just can confirm that you can take uh, Ubuntu image and just use it for the cube views without any additional configuration. I think Microsoft could provide some kind of uh, virtual images for Azure. I think we can try to test them if they works with uh, with cube <laughs> So usually when I have these conversations, I look at how things work with OpenStack. Um, and while you see regularly a lot of distributions and things creating QCOW2 images and, and publishing those, um, to my knowledge, uh, in regards to OpenStack, Microsoft has not done that before. And it is up to the platform operator to create a pipeline to build and maintain those images. And I think it's the same situation for Cooper, but I am not the um, specialist on anything Windows. So um, that is just the state of the art last I knew, which may be years out of date. May I have a question? If we support some specific images just for CubeWeird, like on Kawaii, I think there were just test images. Do we? Like Alpine and, and Fedora and nothing else. 
um, Kubevert is a general virtual machine provider. So it supports the hardware pieces, or, you know, the virtual hardware pieces around the OS that you're running. Um, and obviously it's tested against various images and pipelines during development, but I don't know that there is a specifically supported list of OSs other than what is generally supported by Libvirt and KVM. Yeah, I was talking more about uh, the main repository with uh, images. For example, uh, Ubuntu, sorry, Open Ebola has that marketplace uh, where they're building all the images for the, uh, their platform. There is CentOS, Ubuntu, Alpine, FreeBSD, and all these kind of images except Windows. And I was thinking if we do the same, like do we provide support for some images or we don't? As can I see for now, uh, OpenStack also does not doing this. Uh, and if we don't do that, and do we want to do that? And yeah, that's the thing. Because I never seen any marketplace of images of virtual machine images just for Kubevert. So we more rather stick to the OpenStack strategy where every provider provides its own image, like Ubuntu building their own cloud image and you can download it from Ubuntu uh, marketplace. And CentOS doing the same and all the vendor provide their own cloud images and we just support them. <laughs> That's the thing I wanted to say. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I, ju I just wanted to say that we are sticking to OpenStack strategy and we have no such common place for storing all yeah. the images we support too. Right. Okay. Um, actually, uh, Howard, I think the um, notes about uh, ARM stuff Oh, it was dropped by you, and I'm not sure if you came in late. Did you have anything that you wanted to bring up about that? Okay, uh, Wayne made some progress on the QB versus CI on M64. Uh, now we run parallel EQE and unit testing in the QB versus CI system. And uh, great thanks for Brain and Daniel. And they uh, help me a lot. Um, and uh, I put two links here. Uh, it shows shows the ETE test result and the unit test result. Um, we have run it for almost a week. And uh, I've, uh, what do you say, every uh, PR, uh, submit to the two QBWords would uh, trigger the ETE test and the unit test, uh, but it will not report to the uh, to the submitter. It we can only see it in the test grid dashboard. So uh, can you click to the fourth link? Click into the fourth link. Yes. Yes. Um, there are still some failures, but most of failures is not the um, because the test failed, but because uh, maybe the uh, PR resubmitted and the task is terminated and the running a new task to to do the E two E test. Uh, yeah, but we still have one issue to resolve, uh, and. Uh, I think in the most time, the CI is stable. Yes, and uh, the last link, can you see the GitHub Kubevert issues? Uh, yes, uh, I put the all issues here and uh, you, you can see the, uh, I think number 11, 11 
Yeah, this one. Uh, th this one is the last issue we uh, I have to solve. Uh, I can uh, reproduce this issue in my local server. Um, and it's a little bit hard to debug because it's maybe uh, not uh, related to the QVBert itself, but related to some Golang library. Uh, so I, uh, and uh, it's only ha happens when I run all the ETV tests. Um, if I pick up the failure test and then repeat, uh, run it repeatedly, uh, this failure would not happen. S mm, yes. Uh, okay, uh, I'm not come here ask for help about this uh, this program because it's only happened on 64 uh, uh, platform. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, another uh, thing I want to share is uh, is. So oh, um, I don't okay. know the the error is ambiguous as far as what it says at the end of this string, but this is this test VM name is seventy one characters. Yes, and I believe the character limit is sixty three. So if you have control over the VM names, random string, you might check that out. Okay. Oh, so the uh, so the string is longer than the. Yeah, I just ran it with uh, word count, and checked oh. the character length, and it's seventy one characters. Uh, okay, but the VM name is generated uh, automatically, right? Uh, that... Yeah, I think I think that might be the point of the test. Creating a VM when the name is longer than 63 characters. Maybe that is the aim of the test, but I'm not sure why you get the error. Mm -hmm. Okay, good point. Howard, Andre, Andre had a question on the CPUs that the servers are running. What 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 CPUs are you testing against? Uh what CPU I'm testing on it? Yeah. Uh, you mean the, like the CPU comes from which company? Yeah, what kind of ARM CPU is it? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's Ampere Ultra CPU. Oh, wonderful. Mm. Uh, are you using the, the latest version? Yes. Um, Maybe not the latest version of Amp Ultra because we got this server um, last year, I think. So it's a one. Uh, and uh, I think the latest may be N2. I'm not sure if they have sold this, the N2. Okay, thanks. Yeah, okay. Uh, so th this is the status of the CI. I'm, uh, yeah, after I solve this program, um, I'm wondering if we can try to show the result to the, uh, in the, how do you say, the, 
uh, show the result in the GitHub, not only in the in the test grade. To let users know, we have run some ARM um, sixty four CI testing. Yes, yeah, so my question is, can we show the, uh, the PR submitter the result of the, uh, the CI test, the, the E2E test and the unit test on ARM64? I, I think we can, yes. Um, they won't be required at first until we're, we're sure they're, they're stable, but we can definitely uh, report the results to the GitHub PR at least. Okay, cool. Uh, and the sixth thing I want to share is uh, QBvert device verification on ARM64. Uh, so can you click this link here? This issue link. Uh, the next topic. A QBvert device verification vacation on ARM64, yes. Uh, yes, uh, here is a table, but you can go to the bottom and I make a summary. Uh, yes, so the watchdog device, sound device and the SRLV uh, device are not supported on ARM64. And we also not support uh, secure boot on ARM64. And uh, because I don't have uh, a GPU, so I do not verify the CPU and the client pass through. So we can treat it as a main gap between uh, of QBvert on ARM64 and QBvert on x86. So uh, I have a question. Um, uh, so for for the uh, device like uh, watchdog and uh, uh, sound device, uh, they are not supported by the QMU KVM binary, uh, which is come from the repository of uh, central stream line. Uh, so if I want to make the QMU KVM binary support those devices, uh, I should submit a request in Bugzilla, right? I think Andra already did it, but I'm not sure. Can it be? Um... May I beg your pardon? Sorry. I think Andrea Bologna already filed an issue against uh, CentOS 9 stream, but I'm not sure. So I would double check with him. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> okay, that's all I want to share. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks for walking us through that. Awesome work, team. All right, then we're going to try and knock out some PRs. And let's see what we got. Yeah, I wasn't sure about a couple of these, but I thought better to add them to than not ignore them. All right, let's see. That I did not want to click on that. Okay. Um, Oh, 
Okay, so it was open five days ago and had some CCs on it. The Yeah, we can skip it as one. I, I'm I'm pretty sure networking team is looking into it. Great. We can skip this one too. Okay. I should get into it. Better be safe than sorry. So thank you. Let's see. Yeah, I, th I think we can approve an LDTM this one. So maybe Daniel, Brian, you, if you can. Thank you. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. You can CC me if you want. Um, what handle am I CCing? Um, actually, I can uh, Brian M. Carey. I can I can jump in there from the notes actually. This doesn't look like it's at risk of idle right now. Okay, so it's my PR. I just put it because like I received some small review three weeks ago or two weeks ago, and it's a bit stale. Uh, maybe just a feedback if it's something that community will uh, accept, but. So it's basically uh, tuning when you are running a VM, running on multiple Numa nodes, and you just want to say, for example, that you want to interleave your memory onto those two Numa nodes. And in here, I just pick the strategy that uh, spread it across the Numa nodes where your CPUs are. Uh, because right now we just default to the strict policy, which will just fill up the first Numa node with memory and then the second which can provide some memory fragmentation. So you are adding the super for, for balanced policy or? Uh, in here, uh, you can specify uh, which one you want to uh, pick. And it doesn't default to anything, but you can specify any option that QM allows you to, or leave it. Okay, yeah, sounds good to me. We can have a look. Yeah, the, the only thing I didn't include is here is the should we, like when you are only using one Numa node and you specify an interleave option, should we uh, like change it to strict or preferred or just leave it as interleave? I don't know how it behaves with one Numa node in interleave mode. <laughs> I bet it's just preferred, but that's my only concern here. Yeah, I, w I wonder how to how to make it work because we don't know uh, beforehand how much human nodes you we will get. Yep. And yeah, the second PR, if you want to if you want to go with it and we want to add some integration tests, it would be nice to have multi numa nodes in our CI. So I just add some script uh, to do it, but I also haven't received any feedbacks. I don't know if it's something that the community would like to go with or not. The changes are pretty simple. It's just adding some option to our bash scripts. Yeah, we, we can have a look. Yeah, that, that seems good to me. So do you do the exchanges, uh, I guess in, in the Go CLI on the cluster app phase? Yes, also. 
there are a couple. I changed five files. We have we used this. Uh, so I did it some time ago. So yeah, but we have this Go CLI binary. I add some uh, uh, parameters there, and I also add some parameters to common script and ephemeral script, so we can push it downwards to QM works. Sounds good to me. I will have a look. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like that one was answered two hours ago, so we should be good there. Looks like a solid answer. And let's see. The arm stuff is really heating up, isn't it? Looks like it this week anyway. If I remember correctly the comments, because there are plenty. At the end, the conclusion is that it's probably a problem with the machine. Or not. Yeah. Or not. Sorry, wrong, uh, wrong issue. Oh, hey, cool. All right. Uh, I think we expect the release to be in few weeks, but I'm not sure when exactly. I think uh, Kubernetes uh, 126 is released in two days, actually, or so. So I think we have a couple of weeks after that release of Kubernetes. But release, I thought was, uh, is Stu still on the line? She's probably got a better memory than me. Um, I think it's pushed into January because the because of shutdowns and stuff. Did we? Maybe, yeah, I'm not to probably update. Funny, I was sitting here thinking we weren't going to do that until December, and then I realized it's December. <laughs> it's December, yeah. A Comes up quick. I think if memory serves, Kubernetes got pushed back as well. But only a couple of days. December 13th is a current tentative, maybe. But then the Kubert release we said would follow a couple of weeks behind. And like you said, with holidays, it makes sense that would be something to watch in January. Mm -hmm. 
the when was this updated? The um, release uh, it's updated two days ago. Release zero five nine actually has it um, uh, 0.59 GA on the twenty first of February. So that's quite a bit after the Kubernetes release. Oh, was that Andrew? I missed it. Twenty uh, first February. I'll drop the link in the chat. I, I think this is the most relevant document. Oh, check that out. I forgot that we had that. easy cool and with that unless there was or any last second additions to the agenda or if something popped into someone's head and they'd like to share we'd love to hear going once going twice and that adjourns this week's community meeting. We thank you all for joining me and the rest of the Kubert community here. We'll see you same time, same place next week. That's good, thanks. Thank you, bye. Thanks, bye. Thank you, bye-bye.